Welcome. In this video, I'll explain the Zeeman effect. Now, if we have a hydrogen atom and we insert it into a magnetic field, because of the fact that the hydrogen is comprised of a proton and an electron that is orbiting it, we are going to have on one hand orbital motion around the proton, right? And we also have the intrinsic spin of the electron. And as we saw in the previous few videos, right, where we discussed the spin-orbit coupling interaction, in this case, we have a magnetic field and we have moving charge. And that means we are going to have an interaction. And particularly, it will be a magnetic dipole moment interaction with the magnetic field. And for that reason, we need to account for this effect if we are dealing with basically, you know, <laughs> any sort of hydrogen atom in a magnetic field. And of course, other cases too, but this is the simplest one. Now, as we mentioned, there are two parts that we need to consider. So on one side, we have the angular motion, right? Uh, wait, uh, that's not ang the angular motion, which is, you know, angular momentum L. But we also have the intrinsic angular momentum or just, you know, spin S. So we have two parts that we need to consider. And we need to find the magnetic dipole moments for each because we know that for each interaction, right, whenever we have a, a magnetic field and we have a magnetic dipole moment, we get an interaction of the form minus the magnetic dipole moment dot product with the magnetic field. And now I do want to make just a quick clarification. There are actually two sort of Zeeman effects that you can encounter. On one side, we have the normal effect, so normal. And whenever you see the normal Zeeman effect, what they say is that we take the spin to be zero. So basically we only take the angular uh, momentum and not the spin. And we also have the anomalous, anomalous, and this one takes both effects into consideration. And what the Zeeman effect is in itself, so when you put this hydrogen atom into the magnetic field, we are going to get a shift in the energy levels, right? So the energy levels will change. And thus, the spectral lines that you get whenever you have photons that are emitted or absorbed, um, those lines will also change. And that's what you can actually measure in the laboratory. So that is what, our goal will be. We want to find exactly what that shift is. All right. And the way to do that is to use this Hamiltonian. And of course, we will be dealing with the anomalous Zeeman effect. However, we will simply call it the Zeeman effect. OK, um, so the way to go about it is to figure out what the magnetic dipole moments are. And that is actually something we have done before. So when we saw the spin orbit coupling, we already found the magnetic dipole moments. So there are two of them, right? Because we have two parts. So basically this magnetic dipole moment here, we can write it as minus one part for the angular motion, mu L, plus one part for the spin motion. Or not motion, but rather the spin. Um, all right, so why is each one of them? As I mentioned, we found them before. If you are unsure where they came from, you can go back. Um, but to be fair, the best explanation comes from relativistic quantum mechanics because there are effects that we are not considering here, right? This is, in the end, a relativistic case, and we are simply dealing with this in a classic uh, way for now. That's why there is a correction that we applied back then. But the results that we found is that for the angular case, and for, for angular motion, we have E or minus E over 2m times the angular momentum. And for spin, we have twice this amount. So these are our two quantities. So we can actually just go ahead and insert it in here. So we get, well, the minus signs will all cancel out. So we get simply plus E over 2m times L and then plus e over m times s and all of this dotted with the magnetic field and let's now finish this up so the hamiltonian will be we can factor out e over 2m so e over 2m 
we factor it out and we get L plus, and here we have to multiply by two, right? So the point of this is that if we multiply everything inside, we have to get the same that we had before. And if we were to just multiply, we would get something here divided by two. So we have to multiply by two so that we are not doing anything illegal. So this would be L plus two S dot the magnetic field. So this is the Hamiltonian for the Zeeman effect. So this is very important that you write it down because we will constantly refer back to this. And how do we go about it now? So how do we actually find um, the energy levels? Well, we know that to find the energy levels, we need to find the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. At least that's what we used to do. So basically find this, which will give us the energy levels. Um, but the problem is, as we know that the hydrogen atom is highly degenerate, so we're going to have to find, as we did before, what the good states are so that we can um, do it the, in the simplest way possible. But it's also important to note that this or, or the techniques that we have to use depend on the strength of the magnetic field. Because if we're using perturbation theory, remember that in perturbation theory, we need to have this external thing to be very small. That's why we call it a perturbation. So if the magnetic field is very weak, for example, in that case, um, well, we can indeed treat the Zeeman effect as a perturbation to the entirety of the system that we already have. But if the field is very strong, then we cannot do that. Then, then we would have to consider that our perturbation is what we had done before. And there is also an intermediate case where we can not actually take um, any of them to be bigger or smaller than the other, and that's going to be a bit more complicated. So we will take a deep dive into each one of those cases. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.